इंडिया लीगल स्टोरीज दैट काउंट हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अनदर स्पेशल रीड आउट फ्रॉम इंडिया लीगल मैगजीन एज यू नो वी आर द नेशन फर्स्ट पोलिटिकल लीगल इंडिपेंडेंट वीकली फोकसिंग ऑन कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल इश्यूज ऑफ नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस the uh, video readouts we present to you are uh, regularly are uh, the editorial team's choice of the most significant stories we believe should receive close scrutiny and wide uh, circulation you can watch them along with the visuals or listen to them as you would a podcast in this commentary we focus on the feudal mindset or feudal structure of the indian judiciary now this may sound like an abstruse or abstract subject but the author of this piece brings it down to earth the writer is dr lokendra malik one of our frequent commentators malik is a practicing advocate in the supreme um, uh, supreme court and delhi uh, delhi high court he has also taught law in different reputed universities including the indian institute of public administration new delhi uh, public uh, law and his main area of interest is uh, in uh, that uh, is basically terms of litigation uh, academic writings and research he has been a member of the internship committee of the lok sabha and is also a member of uh some other prominent academic ac- um, bodies such as like the indian law institute uh and indian uh, the indian institute for of public administration he is also a prolific author and in this week's issue he focuses on an important concern raised recently by supreme court justice dy chandrachud uh, the judge said that technology can be used to end the feudal structure in the judiciary all judges are equal and the constitution should be amended and the term subordinate courts renamed as district judiciary now when i speak of justice uh, uh, judge uh, chandrachud it is never without a sense of awe in november 2022 he is expected to be elevated to the post of chief justice of india He is a Harvard uh, law graduate and the son of the longest serving chief justice of India the illustrious Y V Chandrachud among his various jurisprudential achievements this scholar the younger Chandrachud uh, wrote the lead judgment for the nine uh, judge constitution bench in the famous justice case Puttaswamy versus Union of India case in which it was unanimously held that the right to privacy constituted a fundamental right under the constitution our writer lokendra malik quite correctly zeroes in on judge chandrachud's recent observations about the feudal mindset malik writes that a few days ago while speaking at a national conference on mediation and information technology organized by the high court of gujarat chandrachud said and i repeat that the indian judiciary continues to be feudal and it should change its its mindset to become modern and futuristic he suggested enhancing the use of technology to modernize uh, the judiciary and end the feudal structure just as chandrachud said i quote him uh, we all know that the indian judiciary even today is essentially feudal these feudal practices are evident to us by the element of uh, subordination between practice amongst judges of the district judiciary judges being made to wait when a judge of the higher court is coming to the district at the border of the district or at the border of the district judges of the uh, the district judiciary are uh, not allowed to sit when they talk to high court judges or even higher Now these are some of the symbols of the subordination of the district judiciary. Justice Chandrachud further said that technology can be used to bring necessary reforms to the judicial system. He said that the um, inspection of districts 
which is a source of stress to, uh, to the district judiciary, can be radically changed if we allow electronic registers for inspection by the high courts. Likewise, he said, when we assess the uh, performance of judicial officers or promotion of judges uh, all the way across, I believe, not just from district judiciary to the high courts, but from high courts to the Supreme Court, uh, we can do a lot to assuage the grievances that our processes are not objective and we can assuage uh, that grievance provided, that grievance provided we use technology in an objective manner for those who are under consideration for higher judicial office. So I do believe that technology is full of untapped potential for the changing of the face of the Indian judiciary and for making it more modern, said Justice Chandrachud. Uh, this is a visual address, by the way. Um, uh, Justice Chandrachud uh, writes Malik, is considered a liberal, technology-friendly and progressive judge who has always stood against the feudal culture and mindset prevalent in the judiciary. This was also his reputation when he was Chief Justice of the Allahabad High Court. Uh, the time has come when more judges and lawyers speak up against the feudal environment prevalent in the judiciary. Recently, some states, states like Himachal Pradesh took steps to abolish this culture by replacing um, the, the word subordinate courts with district judiciary. Now, this is a good decision that should also be emulated by other states to protect the dignity of judges working at the grassroots level. Time and again, many public intellectuals, legal thinkers and constitutional pundits have raised this issue on different platforms. But no effective action has yet been taken to abolish the feudal culture from the judicial branch of the state, either by parliament, the Supreme Court. Uh, uh, district uh, judiciary, of course, needs a dignified treatment. Uh, in one of his articles in the mainstream media, eminent legal philosopher, Professor Upendra Bakshi, who incidentally is also a regular contributor to our magazine, also raised concerns against feudalism in the judiciary. He said, and I will quote him, I have always pointed out that uh, at public fora and in my writings that the expression uh, subordinate courts used by uh, uh, part 6, uh, cha uh, uh, chapter 6 of the Constitution of India cannot signify that judges are indeed so. This inelegant enunciation menaces the independence of the judiciary entrenched with and since um, Keshav Nand Bharti of 1973 as the essential feature of the basic structure of the Indian Constitution. Now is the time for Parliament to remove the substantial nomenclature of subordinate judiciary and the courts to eliminate the last vestiges of judicial feudalism the moral fault line of judicial hierarchy. Further, Professor Bakshi states, when I, that's Bakshi speaking, rhetorically posed the question to the then Chief Justice of India, why V. Chandrachud, the present Justice Chandrachud's father, at a public meeting, he was visibly annoyed and he retorted, what's the difference between the CGI and the Sarpanch of a Nyaya Panchayat? I, I meant no disrespect to him or the judiciary. In fact, to his credit, he contained his annoyance. But the fact is that no judge is, quote unquote, subordinate to any other. As constitutional beings, judges are limited in jurisdiction, but also supreme within their own jurisdiction. However, Article 235 speaks of control over subordinate courts. Uh, this article adds insult to injury by describing these entities and agents as persons holding a post inferior to the post of a district judge. The constitution, no doubt, contemplates a hierarchy of jurisdictions, but no judge acting within her jurisdiction is inferior or subordinate on appeal or review 
a court with ample jurisdiction may overturn and even pass judicial strictures. But this does not make the concerned courts lower or inferior. True, high courts uh, always have considerable powers of superintendence on the administrative side. But this supervisory power has been recognized by the apex court as a constitutional power and subject, uh, subject to the right of appeal as granted by Article 235. Professor Bakshi offers a few suggestions to end the feudal, feudal culture in the judiciary. My view endorses a complete recasting of Article 235, which does away with the omnibus expression of control powers in the high courts. They may exercise supervision under detailed performance norms, but there is no reason uh, why for most uh, why, no, no reason why for most matters save elevation senior most district judges and judges of the high courts may not constitute a collegiate system to facilitate judicial administration infrastructure uh, infrastructure access monitoring of disposal rates administer uh, and, and and yes minimization of undue delays in administration of justice alongside matters concerning transfers and leave. The amendment should specifically uh, require the high courts to satisfy the criteria flowing from the principles of natural and constitutional justice and all judicial officers who fill due qualification thresholds should be treated with constitutional dignity and respect. If an ACR, Administratively Confidential Report, is to be adversely changed in the face of a consistent award for a decade or more, it should be a collegiate act of the five senior most justices, including the Chief Justice of the High Court. Now, Justice, uh, Justice Sanjeev Banerjee, former Chief Justice of the, uh, of, the, of the Madras High Court, had also spoken on this issue during his farewell function. He said, my regret is, that I could not demolish the feudal culture in which you serve. Justice Banerjee had told the staff of the High Court, um, uh, he, you know, he was a brilliant judge, uh, well known for his commitment to the cause of human rights, protection, and, 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 and of course, as, as free speech. Gone are the days of feudalism, observes Dr. Malik. There is no place for this culture in the 21st century, which is the era of human equality and dignity. The observations made by Justice Chandrachud, Professor Upendra Bakshi and Justice Banerjee need serious consideration. The Chief Justice of India and the Chief Justices of the High Courts um, uh, may consider sensitize, sensitizing the judicial community to end the feudal culture prevalent in the judiciary to protect the independence of judges working in the district judiciary. The first point of interface to the citizen. There is no place for the word subordination in the judiciary. All judges are free and independent. Every judge acts within his own jurisdiction. No senior judge can direct his junior judge to decide a case in a particular way. Judges are not members of the police or armed forces who need orders from their superiors to discharge their functions. All judges get their powers from the statutes and exercise them within the four corners of the statutes. Also, sufficient checks and balances are made in the judicial system to correct the errors of judicial actions. High courts have constitutional powers to check the errors of the district judiciary and tribunals. And the, and, the, and the Supreme Court is the final appellate court. As per Article 141 of the Constitution, the law declared by the Supreme Court is binding on all courts and tribunals uh, within the territory of India. The law of precedent ensures judicial discipline. In addition, sufficient remedies are made uh, to approach the Hayek Forum in appeal and revision. A judge is a judge and his dignity must be respected by everybody, including his senior colleagues in the judicial community. Therefore, the constitution should be amended and the word subordinate courts should be renamed 
as district judiciary. In the Arnab Goswami case, the Supreme Court also observed our district judiciary is wrongly referred to as the subordinate judiciary. It may be subordinate in hierarchy, but it is not subordinate in terms of importance in the lives of citizens or in terms uh, of the duty to render justice to them. This elegant um, and, and, and beautifully articulated summation and analysis by Dr. Malik, who quotes from India's most authoritative legal luminaries, uh, Justice Chandrachud, Professor Baxi, and Judge Banerjee needs careful attention and both of, of both bar and bench and legislators. Thank you, Dr. Malik, for bringing this to our attention. This is your host editor, Indrajit Badwar. Until next time, goodbye. India Legal Stories That Count. 